All right, thank you everyone, thank you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, this evening is our final time at Skyva. And uh, what we're going to do this evening, I'll explain, I'll tell you the story in just a moment. But uh, what we're going to do this evening is spend a bit of time um, just exploring what this year and a half has been for us. These are pictures that Kayla took, fortunately, because otherwise we wouldn't have a documented recent history of uh, what this space has been to us. And um, the owner, well, the landlord, actually asked us not to meet here again. Maybe we can just draw the door closed a little bit, because there's no amplification here tonight. Just a little bit so that there's a little bit of silence. Okay, that's fine. Thanks so much. You know what? Pray for each other. Why don't we do that first and foremost? Twos and threes, just pray for each other, pray for the evening, and that way we can kind of finish arriving, and then I'll tell you what the evening's going to look like. All right, thank you. Fabulous. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for your flexibility. Um, during, the, during the prayer time before our hour together, um, Stu spoke about this being a kind of a memorial stone, a moment we will remember in our narrative. Uh, I think it was Brian and Hunter who spoke similarly. Uh, just around the idea, let's, let's remember. There is a great passage in the scriptures. Um, I'll just read it to you quickly. Welcome to our visitors. This is a, a fun, peculiar, and a unique evening for us. Uh, this is the end of the third chapter of our little story. And uh, yeah, it really is an amazing chapter. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I've made known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. And what is overwhelmingly evident tonight has been that uh, in spite of the last five days, which I will walk through in just a moment, God's provision has been remarkable. To the place and point where Lisa, who is the administrator of Skyver, came here this afternoon just off the beach, just saying how disappointed they are that we are leaving. And, uh, you know, some of her language I couldn't say publicly, but, but uh, the, the displeasure of these precious and wonderful Skyver people who really don't necessarily walk in the way of the Lord, but who have loved having us here. And I want to say that uh, is a huge thank you to you, because it's your service, your love, coming early, setting up, tearing down, cleaning, giving it back to them in a better condition than we got it, is testimony to the fact that they are stoked. In fact, we're going to do a thank you lunch for them, and uh, we're going to show some pictures. And Kayla, I'm so stoked we got you to shoot some pics beforehand. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to show them some pictures. We're going to tell them some stories and give them some gifts just to say thank you for an incredible year and a half. But before I run ahead of myself, ladies and gentlemen, Meryl Diane. Yeah. Now, <laughs> You're up, sister. Okay. Sorry, don't walk too far. Okay, Stay we, close, we are joined at the hip. <laughs> but you two distracting, so I'm going to ask oh, you no, to be I neutral. I, I've, I am distracting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just said to Chris, I felt um, just in absolute awe of God through this journey that we've been on as Genesis. And... I remember Chris and I going into planting this church very tentatively, really nervous, like, God, you know, are you sure? And one of the things we prayed is we said, God, we want to see your hand. We, we really want to see your hand. We want to see your mighty right arm come in before us, like show us the way, be, 
be present in this story. And uh, we met in our home initially and it was fabulous. We absolutely loved having everyone in our home. And I remember the one Sunday where there was, I don't know, 50 people and we felt too jammed. Jake was up the stairs. Remember Jake? He was sitting <laughs> up the stairs at our place. There was yeah. people up the stairs and people couldn't see. And I felt like, oh, this is a little jammed. It's too small. And the amazing thing is that week, it was kind of end of November, early December, I think. And, and on a Wednesday, Chris got a call from Lisa. And this wonderful uh, lady here who we had met, long story, she said, Jeremy wants to meet you. And Chris came home on, on that Wednesday saying, Jeremy Scarver has given us this use of this warehouse absolutely free for Sundays. And we were like completely amazed. And one of the things I just knew in that moment is, wow, God, this is you. Like, we didn't ask for this. You just went ahead. The, the story continues. On the Thursday, uh, we had an interns meeting and we we're sitting around at our table at our home and Tyler gets a call and I think it was from Micah. And Micah says, hey, we've got a sound system. Do you guys want it? And we're like, oh, wow. I didn't even know that. So we'd been praying for one 10 minutes earlier. Tyler gets a call. Micah gives us a sound system. Now the game's on. We're thinking, wow, we have a, a venue. We have a sound system. No money. Yeah. <laughs> on the Friday, um, we, we were given 150 chairs. No, about 100. About 100 chairs from Rock Harbor, these chairs. And we had chairs. And the same day, we got an incredible gift from a, um, a wonderful church in South Africa. And if you know the exchange rate, it was a very generous gift because it you know, converted into dollars. It was a good chunk. And we were, wow. And I just, I felt tonight to me is such a testimony of that God the God who goes before, the God who, you know, before we even really knew we needed Skyver, God was orchestrating Skyver for us. And I, I feel like as you hear the story tonight, you're going to see the God that goes before. And I just honestly feel unbelievably grateful to God for, for, for this Genesis church, for this beautiful community that you are all part of, and the fact that He has really shown His mighty right arm on our behalf, and that gives me such confidence and um, just joy. So that's my little bit. Thank you, my love. <laughs> so what became evident was that each time uh, Isaiah 60 lands itself in this phrase, that in God's time He does things swiftly. In God's time He does things swiftly. So we left the art studio in Irvine, which was purely a dinner together with a few folks exploring the idea, should we plant? And uh, we felt the end of that, Ty Matson, who again kindly made it available for us free, he was moving down to San Juan Capistrano, the studio was no longer available, and we said, what do we do now? And June the 1st, two years ago, we made a decision, well, it's a little more complicated, we made the decision to plant Genesis in our home. And we were totally happy there. We weren't in a rush. We were loving having everyone, curious as could be, who God was adding to us week to week. Some it was students who got a free meal, and they were very happy um, that they got a free meal. For others, it was far more the prophetic curiosity. What is the shape of the church to come? And uh, the story Merrill describes is the surprise that uh, Jeremy Skyver offered us a space when we weren't looking for one. It was, I remember coming home and thinking, but I don't want to move. I'm totally happy in our home. It takes a long time to build anchor ideas, build community, build relationships, be trusted, uh, see the value of together on mission. And uh, that doesn't happen overnight. If you build a gathering, you can get lots of people, but you don't have those anchor ideas in place. That takes time. And so when Jeremy contacted us and said, this is available for you, um, I honestly was thrown. But it was almost like God said, Chris, for heaven's sake, let me show you four ways that this is the right move and the right time. So we got this place at the end, a year and a half ago, year end of 2017, I believe it was. So on Wednesday of this week, I got a call. I'd just come back from a prayer walk, and Jeremy called me. Jeremy doesn't call me. 
Lisa calls me. So I thought, well, this is interesting. What have we done wrong? You know, you know it's like you call to the principal's office, and you never think, oh, what award did I get? It's like, oh, crud, they found out about me, you know? So I took the call, and he, after the initial kind of pleasantry, said, look, Chris, the landlord has found out about you, and he has let me know he does not want a church on this property. I have tried to speak to him. I have tried to communicate. You've been here for a year and a half. You've been a blessing, which is amazing, again. And uh, he said, do you want to call him? So I instantly shot out a few texts to say, pray. I quickly showered, and I called him. The story is, this is in a family trust that's been accumulated over 50 years of buying up properties. He is the grandson who now has management of part of the trust, and simply stated to me, I do not want a complicated arrangement. I said, well, thank you. I fully appreciate it. He said, I do not want a church. I do not want a sports club. I'm not too sure how a sports club would use a space like this, but be that as it may. He said, I want the simplest thing. He said, Jeremy was out of contract having you here. So I tried, can I come and see you? Can we get insurance? Can we write up a contract that exonerates you from anything? He said, I do not want a church here. Sidebar, I heard he's a lapsed Mormon. I don't know if he has issue with the church. Put the phone down and I realized in my heart that this was another God doing thing, something before we felt we were ready for it. So that was on Wednesday. Wednesday night, Stu and Dana's midweek prayed up a storm. Great feedback. Thursday, we camp brought the three midweeks together, prayed. Thank you for all of you who took additional time to pray. I did smile to myself thinking, well, if we're trying to increase the prayer platform in the community, there's no better way to do it, not through talks, but let's just take the building away from you and let's see what you do then. And it really was. It's been exquisite. I mean... We've prayed more than normal, individually and as a couple. Others have. It's just been a wonderful sense of prayer mobility that just instantly clicked in, for which I am incredibly proud of us as a community. We still had no place to go. Friday morning, I'm on a prayer walk, and Rock Harbor calls me. I had an office there for two years. I was never on staff, but I worked with them, did a lot of teaching there, and worked with them in their multiplication Stacy calls me. I had called her. She calls me and she says, um, um, we can help short term. We can, we can find a space for you. Fieldwork calls me, which is a shared workspace. They call me of their own. Jeff calls me and he says, listen, you guys are welcome to come in here. I've heard about your plight. One Sunday, short term or long term. I go in, I meet with them. And on... Thursday morning, Todd Proctor called me and told me about Taylor and uh, what is his shared workspace called Common Thread Collective is about. He said, I think you should call Taylor. Now, I'd met him. Now, sidebar, he's going to be here in 10 minutes. He's finishing up with their meeting and then he's coming here because I want you to meet him. Because I realize it's not about the space we're getting, it's about the story God's inviting us into which is far more sublime than a Sunday night where we have a cool hip space to have our meal in and worship in. So Friday morning we have three spaces. Friday afternoon, Tyler and I go and look at it. I text a few people to say, right, who's available? Let's go and check it out. We did on Saturday. And the sense was that this is the space we should step into at least for the summer. Now, that's the narrative about how amazing and how quick it was. And when you see the pictures... I think you'll be as delighted as we are. However, I thought it would be great for us to take a few moments, tell a few stories of what God has done. Kayla has been with us from the early conversations at the studio. She popped in there and then was with us in the home and is, is uh, obviously been with us here. So I just thought, you know, normally we default to... I, the interns who've been with us, certainly the three who've been with us from the beginning. But I thought, why don't we have Kayla? So Kayla, come up here, girl. Let's put her on the thing. Just to record it, if you don't mind. Okay. Sweet. Um, 
Oh, you're connected. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so, <laughs> can't go very far. Okay. Um, yeah, like Chris said, I've been with Genesis for a really long time, and I think it's been, it's just been super amazing to see how much this community has grown. Because the space we were at when we were at Chris and Merrill's house was just so small, and it was like super intimate. And part of me was really selfish, and I didn't want Genesis to grow. Because I was like, oh my gosh, what we have is so amazing. And when we made the switch to come here and the Skyver like came in here and I was like, holy cow, this space is so big. How on earth are we ever going to fill this space? Because it felt like we were just such a small little community. And I just remember thinking when I was taking photos of one of our last nights here, I was just standing up top and I was like, oh my gosh, we don't fit in here anymore. Like there's so many people, but it's so crazy because it didn't feel like some big church that got out of hand and like you don't know anybody you show up and it just feels like a strange place is like no this is still home to me and every person that's come in here has become part of our family which I think is so incredible and just being able to watch our community worship together and just be a family and when I heard about everything that happened I was like well I mean I feel like this is a good time because we don't fit in here anymore and just like having a bigger space to move into is so exciting um but yeah, just Genesis has been with us, or been with me through a lot of my highs and a lot of my lows, and I honestly, I don't know if I could have done life without Genesis, and I've had a lot of really vulnerable moments with people in this space. I've had a lot of really intentional conversations with people. I've had just like simple relationships go a lot deeper. I've met so many more people and furthered those relationships, um, and it was crazy. I just... I've been in a season of winter for so long and this community has helped me through it and now I'm stepping into a season of spring and a season of blessing and through that, like this community has shown me that. And um, God has also like shown me like spiritual gifts and he's starting to show me how he speaks to me through visions and dreams. And it's just like, I don't know if I would have discovered all of that just within this short time I've been with you guys without you and this community and the way that God speaks through each and every single one of you, whether through it's a simple word or a prayer or a hug or a smile or a conversation. And so it's just my life was, when I first moved out here, not great. It was really hard. And I found this family and it, it rescued me. And it was, it will always be my family. And I'm so, so, so excited to see what God is going to do with this family in our next space and see who he brings in. So Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks. So, um, we prayed for three colleges, and initially there was this flurry of vanguardites, which was fun, and then we prayed for some other colleges, and Jordan and Maddie, why don't you guys come up here, are they from Biola? Jordan first, then Maddie. Oh, what? Oh, what? You didn't tell me. I didn't tell you. No, those are the best ones. Uh, yeah, so this morning, um, Chris texted me. I woke up to a text from him asking to just share a story as we just close out our time at Skyver. And honestly, it was just so hard to think of just one story. And I thought long and hard for like a good two minutes, and then I knew what I was going to talk about. Um, I'm glad that was a good one. And then, um, yeah, and I couldn't think uh, about anything else but my first time coming here. Uh, I remember I came with two other people from Biola. Actually, me and Maddie weren't together at the time. We were broken up, but <laughs> hey. And so, so, so this. <laughs> so this is what it was like. But, um. Yeah, so I remember coming, and I was just like, okay, we're going to Costa Mesa to this new church, and a new, probably hipster church, we're in Costa Mesa, and then soon... Led by an old guy. Led by an old guy yeah. who's hipster, so soon to, <laughs> so, soon, soon to find, I walked through the space, I'm like, okay, already we're in like a warehouse that's pretty hipster, we got string lights, we got the drapes, the dried flowers, I'm like, right, just what I predicted, and so... Oh, but also at the same time, I came in just like really skeptical. I was just like, okay, like, is this church like biblically sound? Like, 
more like with my fist up than rather just like, oh, let's go like worship with um, another body. And so I was very skeptical. And then within like probably five minutes, I felt honestly just like I can't describe it besides a supernatural just like opening of my heart. I just felt so um, relaxed and very like I was like, wow, this is beautiful. Like it went from like, whoa, this is super hipster. Like, okay, let's see where this goes to like, wow, this is awesome. Like to be in this space and to, for, pe for these people to be doing church like that. And then um, I remember sitting at the round table, like it was right here and the, the uh, closest to the stage and literally my back is facing this way. And I remember this uh, long red haired, Sean White, um, uh, snowboarding looking dude coming up to me um, Ke Caleb, if you guys don't know who I'm talking about, <laughs> and he, and he just starts talking to me and like, you know, asking me the normal, like getting to know you questions, but I, I just did not feel like it was the, like fill the air type of space, uh, talking or just like trying to, um, yeah, mostly to fill the air. I, I genuinely felt cared for by Caleb and I, which is very like, I wasn't used to cause I, it wasn't like he was trying to talk to me to get me to come back it was about just like I want to know who Jordan is and that was just such an awesome thing and then the next thing was worship like like I said I was sitting right here like imagine how we're all here I'm I'm at the front right here and we start worshiping and before we didn't we didn't set up the chairs before it was just you turned in your chair and I'm like normally and when it's worship time I'm like keeping my eyes open like okay do I is this the type of church where I'm like right here or am I right here and but I, I didn't have the opportunity to do that because I'm at the front you know and so I was just like but it was awesome because because of that I just was so like uninhibited and just felt so open to freely worship and I felt like it was just me and God and Tyler right here and um, but yeah that was set the tone for worship which like, as you guys know, like, the worship culture is just so great here. And, um, and then was the message, which I don't really remember because Tyler was speaking, but um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> um, and then right after, I remember, yeah, sorry, I, I really don't remember. But um, right after was uh, prayer, and we had an opportunity to pray with someone, and um, Peter actually prayed over me, and that was just so powerful. He spoke prophetically into the um, situation that was going on with me and my brother. Like, I didn't tell him anything, and he's like, I'm, I feel like there's something going on with your brother, and like, spoke into the, so specifically to where I was just like, wow. And just leaving the space, I just, again, this is my first time, and I left, and I was just like, wow, like, that was amazing. And um, I was thinking to myself, and I was processing out with my, my uh, roommate, and it's just like, you know, this, this is not a man-made, uh, artificial thing that you can put together to leave so full of the Spirit. And like, so like, the fact that I came in skeptical and the whole night was just so like, I knew Jesus was in it the whole time. And so, yeah, like walking away, it was, he, he was just like, like, you definitely know that this, this place has been, they, they needed to pray so much in order for it to be so like filled with the spirit and that's something that I'm just so thankful for it as much as Skyver is like has been home as far as I've been here like the spirit has just been so full yeah. in not only the space but in you guys and where you guys have become family and um, that's why it's so exciting as we step into this new space it's okay because you know like we're, we're going together and this, it's not because of this community even though it's like we really are like this community is so great but it like um, Kaylee said at our prayer meeting like it's not about the community it's we have to always go back to Jesus is why um, we're able to be in this you know so wonderful yeah wonderful wonderful Maddie do you want to say something So I would probably be super nervous um, right now because Chris did not warn me, but um, these spaces have become home for me. Like in the past five, six months I've been here and I've never experienced that at a church before. I grew up in a church and so, or I grew up in the church and I was always going to church, but I never felt like this was home and this was family. And so this 
place and I was encouraged just in pre, pre-service prayer today, I felt like the Lord was encouraging me that um, about just the nurturing hands of the Father and I feel like that has been this place for me and it's been a place where it's just so safe to explore um, and to, to, to step into different areas that I wouldn't have normally stepped into or been comfortable with. And I think a lot of it was started even just with midweeks going to um, that intimate place of like, wow, I feel like really safe to be vulnerable here. And then that just like spread into like, oh, I can totally serve on Sundays and I can I can speak in front of people. And like, I don't know, it's just cool. Cause I would have, I was seriously am not, I hate talking in front of people. So um, I mean, I'm still a little nervous right now. But. Um, yeah, so this place has just been the biggest blessing and I have, complete confidence in where the Lord's leading us and just excited for this next season. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Kirsten. Kirsten, where are you? Kirsten. Yeah, we fine. Hello. <laughs> um I would say when I talk about Genesis to other people, the phrase that I always say is the spirit of the Lord dwells here. Um, And it's one of the most compelling reasons to talk about this church is that I invite people into a space where I know the Lord is present. Um, And the first time I ever showed up was at a midweek, actually. (laughs) And one of the first faces I saw was Shelby. And um, she was so good about saying, hi, I'm da 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 and then she was introducing me as her friend to other people. Um, and I just met her like five minutes before and was like blown away at the level of like intimacy that people wanted to have with me um, the minute I walked in. Um, so that was, that was like immediately I was struck by the level of hospitality. And then I met Chris and Meryl and they were like, come, like, have you eaten? Like meeting, not just like the physical, but also the spiritual, like all in the same moment. And that is mission living. It is, I'm seeking to meet your physical needs and where your soul is at. And so um, seeing this church truly be the hands and feet of the Lord has been such a gift. I remember as I was transitioning out of my big church, so I attended a really big church. I was on staff there for a couple years and I was like really asking the Lord, like, God, I know that you're calling me into something deeper, but I don't know if there's a community out there that represents that. So can you help me find it? Because I don't think it exists. What I think it should be. Um, And what I think you've called us to be. And so um, really and truly I'm here because of the Lord. I was listening to a podcast and Chris and Mary were speaking on it. I was like, I'm going right away. And so I like drove to Costa Mesa like that week and was like, oh my goodness, it's real. Like it's real. People who seek to love the Lord well. People who want to do dining room like conversations, people want to worship, pray, and storytell. Like, those are the things that I was praying for that I didn't know existed, and the Lord met me exactly where I was. And he's called me in such a divine, intimate, loving relationship with him. Like, I was reminiscing driving down here and was just so thankful that I've been able to see God so tangibly work in my life in ways that I've never seen him work in my life before. Um, and to be able to make connections to he loves me so much and he loves his children so much. So, um, yeah, I'm just so grateful and so thankful you guys have made me feel like I've been here like since the beginning. So, and I, and I encourage you guys as new people come in, as we enlarge our tents is something we've been saying, that you are so intentional with others that they feel the way that you felt when you first walked in these doors because that changes the world. People are looking and are desperate for communities like this and nobody else is offering this but the church. So let's live on mission in that way. So Beautiful. Well done, girl. Well done. Heather? Hi, guys. Uh, this is hard. Okay. Hi, guys. I just want to talk a little bit about where I was at before I came to Genesis. Um, similar to Kirsten, I was working at a big, big church. I had been on staff there for four years, and I felt like I totally got church. Like, I got it. I ran it. I knew how to welcome people. I knew how to show up and make them feel 
Um, like they were the only person in the room. Like I was like this professional welcomer in my eyes and this professional churchgoer. Like I knew everything, of course. And, um, and yet I was hungering for something so much smaller and so much deeper and so much more intimate than what I was experiencing. Um, but I, like Kirsten, I, I didn't really know like if that existed or how to ask for it or where to go. And in my last few weeks uh, and months working at that church, I was just getting more and more and more and more tired and more and more and more and more just apathetic and over it and feeling like it didn't matter, um, feeling like uh, just super over it. Yeah, that's my best way to describe it. Like I, I showed up to a church the week after I had quit my job, just like, okay, let me try this out. And I, I knew like all the principles of like, if you show up, you have to initiate, you can't just expect people to come to you. But I was just done. Like I didn't talk to one person. I was so tired of coming to church and being like on and performing and being like, hi, yes, welcome, hello, we're so glad you're here, oh my gosh, like, I was so over it, <laughs> and so I, I showed up to this church, not this church, but the one I went to the week before, and I was just like, I wrote in my journal, like, God, I'm so over this, I don't know how to talk to you anymore, it feels like, I don't know what to say to you, I don't even know how to be in church anymore without, like, planning it and programming it and um, making up a game and like putting on a smile and being the person to welcome people in. Like, I don't even know how to be a normal person in a church anymore. I'm so focused on the behind the scenes and how can we program this to be the most effective. Um, and so I wrote in my journal just how, how over it I was, how tired I was, how burnt out I was. Um, and then like any good millennial, I saw Genesis on Instagram and... <laughs> I was like, that looks cool. John Mark Comer posted about it. I was like, I'll do anything he tells me to do. So <laughs> I was like, let me just try this out. And I walked in through this way, which I later learned is the wrong way, um, <laughs> like socially. So I walked in and I showed up a little too early. I, was, I showed up at five, Ooh, big mistake. Um, but it was actually the best because I remember coming in and I will never forget, like literally every head turned to me because like, this is such a small community. If someone's new, you're like, hello. And so it was like this silence, like everyone turned and then they were just like, hi, and like came to me and like Meryl came and talked to me um, and we just got to know each other a little bit and I will never forget the first few people I met here at Genesis because I was someone who knew exactly how to welcome people and what should be done and all of that and that I should be the one initiating it, but I had no idea how desperately I needed to be welcomed and how desperately I just needed to be a normal person. I like said that, I think the first thing I said to Chris was like, don't make me do anything, I don't wanna plan anything, I just wanna like be here, I just wanna be a normal person. Um, and it was such a gift to just be at this church as one of you and to go from having planned these big services to just like resting in the Lord, just learning uh, who he was in a new way, learning who I was in a new way. Um, I had never experienced the prophetic gifts. I had never experienced being prayed over in such powerful ways as I was here at Genesis. And then practicing that, like having a safe space to be like, what could it look like to try to prophesy over someone else? Like, let's just try it. If you guys were there that one week when we all just like tried prophecy, it was so cool. <laughs> uh, like, let's go for it. And I had never been in a space where it felt like you could explore God in that way. Um, and I have encountered God in a whole new way that I would not have even known for myself or planned for myself um, because I thought I knew exactly what a church should be and how I should be in it. And I'm just so grateful that God used Genesis to shake up my perception of who he was and what community is because I thought I knew what I was looking for and what would be best, but I had no idea what was awaiting me here at Genesis, and it's a thousand times better than I could have hoped for. And I, that was a year ago, and I love this community so much. I love you guys all. You're my family, and I adore you. So thanks for all turning towards me when I walked in the door and <laughs> making me feel like your family. Um, you had no idea how much I needed it. So I love you guys so much. All right, so before I introduce Taylor to you, um, when we planted the community, Isaiah 54 seemed to be a prophetic text that had relevance for us. At the time, I didn't fully understand it,
But the moment I put the phone down on the landlord, who basically told me to get out, um, I, that text came to mind instantly. About two hours later, Peter texted me and he said, Isaiah 54. And uh, to simply highlight and exegete a couple of pieces which will lay the platform for Taylor. It says, Sing a barren woman, you who have no children, more are the children of the desolate one than she who has a husband. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, um, for your descendants will stretch out to the right and to the left. And a couple of things that I felt very prophetically strategic as we close the chapter. The studio, chapter 1. Our home, chapter 2. Skyver, chapter 3. Was, number one, worship remains the forefront of our adventure. Like the tribe of Judah, we will let worship craft a way in the desert for us. No matter what we face, no matter whether it is the high points of God encounter or the low points of desert and frustration, worship will be the prevailing narrative. And then it goes on to say, enlarge the place of your tent. And I think Peter's word to me was the encouragement, it's our job to enlarge. And I think God is putting us in a position to be a highly mobile, flexible people. One of the challenges of taking a long-term lease on a building uh, as a church, or to build a church, is that you lose your sense of mobility and flexibility. The building becomes the curse that holds you captive rather than the tent-like mobility of keep on the move, keep available and open for God to do with us what He chooses to do. In my prayer time, both yesterday morning and this morning when I would pray, I felt like God say, are you okay if I grow you quickly? And I said, Lord, if it's your growth, we're okay. But it's not our growth. It's not our orchestration, coolest Instagram, or whatever. But thank you for that, Heather. I'm so grateful. John Mark, uh, he does like us. I actually got a text from him while I was driving over here today. So I'm famous again. <laughs> Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. And can I say this for us? Open our hearts up. I don't know who God is going to send in age, in gender, in life story, in economics, in, in gender preference and identity. I don't know. But I am asking that our hearts are opened for God to add whom He wishes. Um, lengthen your cords. Cords are relationships, I think, is what that text speaks about. Lengthen your cords. Let your, let your relationships be strong and sturdy. Um, for some of us, it's been a two-year journey. For others, it's been a three-month journey. I think for Nicole, it's your second night, third night. <laughs> so, um, you know, let our, let our relationships be forged with greater strength and then dig your stakes into the ground. The big ideas of dining room table where we do life honestly, transparently, and vulnerably together. Worship, which is our way to encounter God with each other. Prayers, where we all play with a prophetic and the intimate, and the words of knowledge, and words of wisdom, and prophet, all those things collaborate together where we're all the priesthood of all believers, and then storytelling. Part of what we're trying to do is incubate all of you on your spiritual journey. This isn't about one or two or three people. This is about every one of you being in, encountering God to live out the crafting of the dream He has for you which is a fabulous space. Then it goes on to say in the middle of the text, and it describes the jewels um, and uh, the precious stones and the... Lapis lazuli. There we go. One, one of those things. And it basically, you, that's you. What we are building is you, the people, not the building building. And I think God's kindness was we got an identity from this space. And I think God says, no, I think it's time. I'll have it. I'll have it. I, I, I don't want you to become the church that meets at Skyva. I want you to be the community together on mission. Yeah. That is the prevailing narrative. And uh, I land with Zechariah 2, 4, and 5, which said, Jerusalem will have no walls. I will be their fire on the outside and their glory within. Yeah. And I felt that prophetically over the last few days, that God just saying, don't worry about the extremities. I will be your fire. I will lead you through the dark places. I will lead you to new spaces and your glory within. Thank you, Kirsten, for saying that. If God doesn't go with us, 
We have nothing to say. We have nothing to do. We have nowhere to go. But if His glory is within and He's leading us on, then church in the park can be cool. Church in a space can be cool. So, I asked Taylor Holiday if he would come this evening because in my meeting with him and walking around his space, and we have some pictures we're going to show you in just a moment, I was compelled by the story, and I felt like God was inviting us not to a space to use on a Sunday, but invited us into a story which is compelling both immediately in terms of the friendships, but long term with its possibilities. So, why don't we drum solo, Taylor Holiday? So glad you're here. Yeah. He's um, just come from church, so he's, this is his, actually for his sins, he needed more church. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was watching the babies anyway, so this was some good <laughs> spiritual intake for me, so I appreciate it. Um, awesome. I appreciate you guys having me. So a little bit about us, our story, as he mentioned. So we have a company called Common Thread Collective, which is a marketing agency, probably similar to Skyver, um, in, and our building is in Santa Ana. So when I say Santa Ana, though, just on the other side of Harbor and the 405 over by the OC Mix Mart um, and Ikea and right there. So my brother and I started two companies about four years ago together. He started a company called Kalo. They sell silicone wedding rings. Um, you guys look a little young maybe for that context or product, but there you go. There's a few out there. Um, and at the same time, I started my company, a marketing agency. We provided services to them. Um, we were in an office together, the two of us, um, above the Blue Frog Bakery in the Orange Circle. So if you've ever been there, above there, across from the Army Navy Surplus Store, uh, that was our first office. We called it North Korea because it was so terrible. Um, <laughs> but at one point, um, we grew really fast somehow. And at one point, there was about 13 of us in a room like the size of that little pit area. And it, we just kept growing and growing um, just at the fascination of the people around us. They had no idea what we did or how we did it because we spent most of our time goofing around. But somehow both of our companies continued to grow. Uh, we moved into a building in the Orange Circle. We ended up purchasing. Um, if you've ever, ever driven down Glacelle, there's a big uh, neon green sign that says market on a building as you go in. That's one of our buildings. Um, we moved in there. About eight months later, we outgrew that building um, and had to find another space. We ended up purchasing the building that we're in in Santa Ana. It's about a 20,000 square foot warehouse. Half of it is a warehouse um, where there's literally product being shipped out every day. And then the other half is office space. Um, and when we moved in there, it was an old auto parts facility, really low ceilings, bunch of insular offices. We gutted the whole building, put in ceilings similar to this. So we love the space, and it's been an incredible home for us. Um, but one of the things that's really important about our company, so our mission, why we exist, is to help entrepreneurs achieve their dreams. That's the premise that we operate under. It's woven into the fabric of everything that we do. We consider our clients, obviously, to be entrepreneurs, but we also consider our employees to be entrepreneurs. And so we invest really heavily in helping our employees to identify what it is that they want out of their life. And one of the ways that we do that is through a program that we call TMYD, or Tell Me Your Dreams. Every employee that starts with us goes on a two-year journey where for the first six months they meet every other week with a licensed marriage and family therapist to identify what it is that they want out of their life. Um, and the premise is that if you're going to work for us to help us accomplish our business outcomes, I have to be willing to ask you the same question. What do you want out of your life? Um, and to be willing to help you get there. Um, and we did this initially not out of some sort of altruistic uh, modality, but more just thinking, like, why would anybody want to work for us? How would we get them to come here when we were small and useless? Um, but what's come out of that is that we now have this deep culture of dreaming. And every, the first Monday of every month in our company is something we call Dream Day, where people who have reached the six-month mark in their journey stand up in front of the whole company and they declare their dream. Um, and these range from, I want to buy a house, to I want to build a motorcycle and race it, to I want to sort of deal with the loss of my father when I was 12 years old. Like, the, like in front of 100 people, we'll have people stand up and sob and confess like, to just dreams that they have for their life that they never knew they could. And it's become the essential fabric of our um, company and of this space. So we call the building the International Dream Station. Um, and the idea is that it's the initial 
um, sort of home for where dreams are manifest, but it's also a stop on people's journeys. This idea of stations um, are, if you're going to a train station, it's likely a stop to where the, it is that you're trying to go. And so um, two of the dreams that came out of this program was there's a woman who has a dream for a coffee shop where she wants to create sort of um, an environment that she's calling the dream house where it's both coffee that's being served but also co-working for freelancers and solo entrepreneurs who are pursuing their dreams. And then another woman has a dream for an event space that she wants to host. And so we've begun sort of trying to help them think about ways that this could come to life. And about six weeks ago, I got to go out to East London um, to a place called Hackney, which is, uh, think of it like the Brooklyn of London. It's sort of the up-and-coming artist bureau where it's sort of lower socioeconomic status, but there's a lot of art and uh, music and all sorts of things sort of flourishing. And in the middle of that, there's this church um, that has sort of completely reimagined how they might engage this usually like incredibly um, unchurched demographic of people. And part of the ways that they're doing that are through creating, they've taken some of these old churches that they have there um, and they've completely redesigned them to be these event spaces where they have hosted concerts for Coldplay and Florence and the Machine and all sorts of incredible musicians that are coming into this 150-year-old church that they've redesigned. They, they started a brewery, the church did, as a meeting space where they host Alpha. Um, it's an inc what they're doing, and if you get a chance to go look at it, it's incredible, or even just online to check it out. And I was there, and I got to sit with Al and hear his mission and vision for affecting culture with the church. And my passion has always been to see church break out of the walls into the city, into the marketplace in particular. Because you see, I think I have a fundamental advantage over you guys as somebody who's trying to build the kingdom of God. One is that 90% of my people are non-believers. 10% are believers. You guys probably have the inverse numbers. So I just have a bigger pool to start from. Second, you guys get about an hour and a half together on a Sunday, and it's hard to get people to do more than that in church. I get 50 hours a week, no questions asked. So if I'm a 120th as good as you guys, we can build a meaningful community that affects the kingdom of God. And it's real and it's happening. Um, and then in the middle of this, I got introduced to a guy named Ryan Sisson, who I, if you guys have ever been down to Point Loma in the old naval yards, there's a place called Moniker. Um, so Moniker is a, he has a general store slash coffee shop, shop slash bar. He has a co-working space. They have a design studio. And Ryan's just a rad dude that loves Jesus, that believes in the way that spaces can affect people and community. So I took five of my people down there last Monday um, and met with them. The, the woman who wants to start the coffee shop, the woman who wants to start the event space, a couple other of my team members. We went and sat with Ryan. They got to ask questions and sort of just continue to dream up what it might be like to create a space for this. And then as I was sort of praying into this over the last few weeks, I began to formulate this idea of this concept of stations where our building would be the beginning of what would be a lot of spaces. Um, and a lot of spaces, and the premise would be that there would be this combination of retail, some sort of coffee or restaurant, an event space, but the key to each of the spaces would be that there would be a church that would move into the space under the pretense that they adopt the businesses to care and serve for them. And that was sort of the connection into the community. And so this was sort of the vision that we've been starting to play around with and develop for what, um, how we might sort of go out and take what is this sort of like uh, you, all these spaces that are opening up, like the Anaheim Packing House and all these things where you have this sort of mixed retail environments that are, that are developing where the communities and cities are loving to flood into. Um, and so we started developing this idea. And it was Thursday. Um, I was, it, we have a quiet room in our office, and I was in there that morning praying, and I don't know the first thing about real estate. Like, we own a couple buildings, but it's by accident, and we, like, g genuinely, like, I, I can't even tell you how accidental it is. But, um, but like, I, and, and I have, we have, like, a bunch of companies, and I have a bunch of employees, and so this is, like, a t terrible use of my time, in all honesty. And I remember saying to God, like, God, like, I, if this is going to happen, it's you. Like, I, I have nothing for it, so it's you. Um, that night, so I go to Canopy, which is, you know, it's funny because the, the Isaiah 54, the thing, and maybe this is even something prophetically that you gave to Todd, it might have been, but our whole narrative is like, and something that we've just recently sort of taken on is this idea that we have a canopy, but right now we need to lift the walls and let the Spirit blow through. And so this idea of the Spirit breaking out from the walls is real. And I, I, seeing it in London and hearing stories in other places, it's happening. God is moving himself out of these buildings as he always has been through us. But so that night I went in and so after praying that in the morning, I go to see Todd and he says, hey, um, you know, Chris Venan and Merrill, um, well, they've been booted out of their space. 
would you let them come look at your space that same night? And I was like, sure. <laughs> so they showed up Friday. It was the middle of our company meeting, and we walked around, um, and I told them the same thing I would tell you guys, which is that the opportunity is that the building's yours, like to do with what you want. There's nobody there on a Sunday. There's no other landlord but me to, to talk to. So if you want the space, you can have it. Um, but I think the proposition of what I would really offer you is that more than offering you a space, I'm really interested in offering you a vision and a dream and a group of people. See, I think the opportunity is we have about 130 people that work inside of this building um, that the hope and what I think could really be impactful is that not only would you guys be gathering there and soaking the building in prayer and worship the night before everyone comes to work, but I think there's ways that you could actually participate and know the people that we have. I don't know all the ways that that would happen. We're making this up as we go. But I think the real opportunity here is to begin to look at this model and go, what does it look like for the church to have a direct relationship and interaction with the non-church yeah. in a way that allows us to serve and love them? Yeah. So yeah. that's, I think, the opportunity. Um, like, we don't know what it is. Like, if the space is imperfect, but... Um, So we have some pictures to give you not just an audio. Isn't that a compelling narrative? Yes. So that's what we're being invited into. And these are some of the visuals that you can maybe walk us through and describe. Yeah, so, so this is our space. So this is our Friday company meeting. Um, whatever, we begin our, and end our weeks with what we call gratitude. So this is our Friday meeting where we sit around every Friday and we take our five core values and we celebrate each other, and we find ways to give appreciation and gratitude for the things that people have, ways in which people have uniquely lived into that. So there's about 70 people sitting in that space. Um, these hedges are all movable, and we can slide them around. So it would be similar in this, that there's a little bit of a warehouse space triangularly, maybe more office chairs than folding chairs. I don't know. Like I said, we'd be making it up as we go. Um, but yeah, it's a couple stories, similar high ceiling concepts. There's bathrooms. That's the entrance. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly, right? So that's Morgan. Just birthdays. Celebrating. That's Nick. So that guy right, so like some of the cool things, like that guy right there, his name's Nick. His dream that he stood up in front of the company and said is that like his dream is to become a man of God. Doesn't know, doesn't know Jesus, in front of a bunch of non-believers, he stood up and said, my dream is to be a man of God. He's like, I don't know what it means. I'm trying to figure it out. But like that dude needs people around him that love Jesus. So yeah, you could put lyrics on that screen, I suppose, whatever, whatever you guys want. But yeah, so then in the rest of the building, there's warehouse. We could store some stuff. We have a CrossFit gym in the building. We could throw some stuff in, or you guys could go work out in. I don't know. Whatever you want. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> to Taylor is that we would like to come in for the summer and at the end of summer to be able to sit down and they can say look it isn't what we thought could you leave again <laughs> um, or a case of yep this is it this is what we're dreaming we're on the but there's a don't you think there's a synergy in heart and narrative don't you agree yeah. this is an incredible invitation to come into a space as exotic as that as cool as that um, and uh, not just to have a Sunday night for two and a half hours, but actually be invited into what is 120 people, 130 people now, but it's growing and it's reached. And we've had the intro conversations. What if every time they start a new building like that, we will plant a church in there? Yep. So already there is kind of beyond the now kind of story. So I think it's a great moment. What we're going to do now is we're going to break bread together. Because I think what's overwhelmingly clear for Taylor... And for us is the sense that God's gone before us. Mm -hmm. All right. I would love. We're going to stand up and we're going to kind of mess with the chairs a bit because they get exhausting. Um, over here is wine. Over here is grape juice. And uh, I would like. Tell me, can I just take the microphone? Yes, do, it, you do and it. I would love a few of you to come and pray for Taylor, anyway, because we're all going to pray for each other now. And uh, I just think that uh, they've agreed to get out the boat. They've agreed to walk on water. 
They've agreed to step beyond the realms of normal, traditional, ritualistic, repetitive religion and step into an adventure of faith that requires God to show up. And they've invited us into that space. So I think it's good. Um, I'm going to go off microphone now, I'm sure.